click the bell icon to get latest videos from Equida. Hi guys, we are learning types of semiconductor. As we have learned it in 12th, but we are focusing more or less on the basis of energy band diagram and the differentiation between extrinsic N type and P type semiconductor. Let's start with the bifurcation of extrinsic and intrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor are called as a pure semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor are called as impure semiconductor. As I'm saying that intrinsic semiconductor basically are of two types. One is SIGE that is called as single crystal semiconductor and we have to study the compound semiconductor as GAAS that is gallium arsenide we are looking at that particular material we have that particular material in your leds right so we will move towards the extrinsic semiconductor where it is also called as impure semiconductor it is bifurcated into two types one is n type semiconductor and another is p type semiconductor whenever i add one particular impurity material into pure semiconductor that forms the extrinsic semiconductor on the basis of what impurity I am adding, whether it is of metal, whether it is of non-metal and on the basis of that, I will decide the n-type or p-type semiconductor. If I am adding pentavalent impurity, that is example phosphorus, then I am getting one extra electron in the semiconductor material because all the silicon is having configuration 2 comma 8 comma 4 that means there is a sharing of the electrons in between neighboring atoms of silicon but if I am adding phosphorus atom then I am having five electrons in the outermost orbit then all four electrons will share with the electrons in the silicon but what about the final extra electron? That extra electron will remain as it is as extra electron that is responsible for the conduction process. And that's why I will say that it's n-type semiconductor because extra electron is having negatively charged n for negative and n for n-type semiconductor. Let's move towards the p-type semiconductor exactly opposite. I'm adding aluminum as an impurity that means metal as an impurity. Then if I'm getting metal as an impurity, then I'm saying that I will get a deficiency of an electron. I will get one less number of electrons in my semiconductor material. Then in that case, I can say that no electrons, then that deficiency of electron is also called as holes in the semiconductor process. Then whatever charge I'm getting in the hole, that is exactly opposite to the electrons because there is no electron as it is empty chair if i am fill that chair then it forms the negatively charged if i have empty chair then it forms the positively charged then this positively charged carrier is also called as holes and this is positively charged that's why p-type semiconductor this is the bifurcation of extrinsic semiconductor let's move towards in more focus details about intrinsic semiconductor when i'm talking about intrinsic semiconductor all the si atoms neighborhood atoms are having four electrons in its outermost orbit and all the four electrons there is confusion for the si atom whether to lose electrons or to gain electrons to complete its octet now what it is doing the si is doing the sharing basis right so these two electrons between neighboring atoms share the electrons with one another then i can say that whatever bond gets developed between two atoms is called as covalent bond and mind well you have studied it in chemistry that covalent bond is weak bond right so if i'm talking about this particular structure all silicon atoms share the electrons of their and the neighboring atom with one another then whatever bond gets developed is called as a covalent bond then how the conduction gets started if i give the amount of energy which is required to break the covalent bond as i mentioned that covalent bond is weak so less amount of energy is required for breaking of that particular covalent bond then i will break that covalent bond i will get two electrons these electrons will be responsible for the conduction process right now we will move towards more focusing on the energy band diagram of intrinsic semiconductor what we are getting extra in the intrinsic semiconductor energy band diagram if i am saying 
E0, EV, EC, E infinity all are known to you. But as far as EF value is considered, EC minus EV divided by 2. As I have mentioned, it is intrinsic semiconductor, pure semiconductor. In pure semiconductor, I have number of electrons equal to number of holes. If I say that 100 number of electrons in the silicon, so I will get 100 number of holes in the silicon itself. So number of electrons is equal to number of holes. So whatever probability I'm getting to move electrons from valence band to conduction band, it will lie in between EC and EV exactly. So whatever EF measurement I will be getting, that will be EC minus EV divided by 2. That means midpoint in between EC and EV. So this is how the scenario we are looking for intrinsic semiconductor. Let's move more focus on extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductor has two types. One is N type and another is P type. We will more focus right now on N type semiconductor. When I'm talking about N type semiconductor, I have to add impurity as P atom that is phosphorus atom. Phosphorus has five electrons in its outermost orbit. So what it happens one extra electron I will be getting and that extra electron will be completely free. It has no boundation right. It has no boundary. So it is free to move everywhere in the material of silicon and this is how I will get one particular carrier in the material of silicon with which I will start the process of conduction. Now if I am talking about the P that is phosphorus atom I have n number of uh, names for that phosphorus atom. This phosphorus atom is also called as pentavalent impurity. Penta means 5. As phosphorus atom is having 5 electrons in its outermost orbit, that's why it is called as a pentavalent impurity. It is also called as a donor impurity. This is because in whole silicon structure, I have one phosphorus atom and that is giving one extra electron which is responsible for the conduction. So phosphorus is giving something, nothing but the electron, nothing but the charge carrier for the conduction. So that's why this P type of impurity is also called as donor impurity, right? Now, first of all, question comes in your mind that what exactly doping, which I have written in the red pen ink. Now, doping is nothing but the addition of impurity material into pure semiconductor is called as doping simple so simple sentence may if i have a pure semiconductor something which is pure i'm adding something impure into that then that forms the impurity which is called as process doping right let's move towards the p type semiconductor i hope you have got the n type scenario n type operation for the semiconductor then we will move towards the p type semiconductor which is a second type of extrinsic semiconductor i have taken example with impurity atom aluminium as aluminium is having three electrons in its outermost orbit so there will be deficiency of one electron if i'm talking about aluminium is added into silicon then these three silicon atom will share the electrons in the aluminium atom but what about the fourth silicon in the structure of the silicon in the tetrahedral structure of the silicon i can say that this silicon is left with one electron and it is having no bond with another electron rather there is no electron to form the bond so there is no covalent bond and i will get the deficiency of the electron then what will happen one electron will try to move into this empty chair that is nothing but called as hole so if this electron is moving towards this particular hole then the formation of the hole at the another place and this is how i can say that hole is shifted from this particular place to this particular place then this is how again and again the hole getting shifted from here to here here to here here to here and in whole material of the silicon and now i can say that hole is responsible for the conduction process that's why the this particular type of semiconductor is called as p type semiconductor as deficiency of electron is called as hole hole is positively charged 
positive for p that's why p type semiconductor of extrinsic type then remaining is aluminium is also called as acceptor impurity question arises why acceptor means i'm accepting something that means aluminium is already having the deficiency of electron he is hunting for the electrons so what it accept it accepts the electrons in the neighboring silicon atom and it creates the hole into that particular atom it is also called as a trivalent impurity this is because the aluminium is having three electrons in its outermost orbit here electron is having minority charge carriers and holes are having majority charge carriers this is because one aluminium atom is giving me one hole in same way as that of in n type of semiconductor in n type of semiconductor i will be getting one extra electron so in that electron will form the majority charge carrier and holes will be minority charge carrier and in p type i will be getting holes are majority charge carriers and electrons are minority charge carriers in that particular video we all have studied about the types of semiconductor in further videos we will learn more or less about the um, semiconductor theory now we will focus on the basis of energy band diagram perspective on n type and p type extrinsic semiconductor here we are bifurcating n type and p type semiconductor so we will learn on the basis of energy band diagram let's more focus on n type of semiconductor first here i have excess of electron in the room temperature so at room temperature also i have free electrons so there are more or less probability tending towards the energy fermi level energy tending towards the ec so i will not get the proportionate fermi level energy proportionate probability not getting 0.5 probability so this fermi level energy for n type semiconductor efn will move towards the ec just below the ec now we are talking about the p type semiconductor exactly opposite here we have excess of holes and holes are lying above the fermi level energy so i can say that if i have excess number of holes that will occupy the space below ec and this fermi level will lie just above the ev that is valence energy level so here we will not get exactly mid portion of the fermi level as the fermi level energy band rather than that i will get the energy band fermi level gets shifted towards the conduction band when i'm talking about n type towards valence band when i'm talking about p type so this is how the study for energy band diagram with n type and p type extrinsic semiconductor thank you so much for watching this particular video we will learn more and more edc with all the modules this is nothing but the prerequisite on the basis of which we will move towards 6th 5th 4th 3rd 2nd and 1st module of adc2 thank you so much